And now, with me harnessing the ultimate power of the universe, I shall destroy you. Nah. So to start off, what are the characteristics of the power of friendship? Well, as we can see in the movie, in movies, in kids shows and anime, the power of friendship involves improves three main quality, uh, quality categories in a person: physical, magical, and mental. Each of these qualities also have a ton of sub qualities as well, of course. So, for instance, physical can be branched branched out into speed, strength, agility. Mobility, endurance, and so much more. Magical can equate to the magical powers that people may have either may have either the overall strength of the power, their mana being refreshed with them basically starting their battle with untapped magical stamina, or perhaps they unlock an entirely new power, and so much more. Then there's also the mental category which harbors confidence, a clear state of mind, a different perspective, and as well, so much more. So how exactly can we write these sorts of improvements occurring and make the reason due to a person's friends without it being overused or cringy? Well, to start, I wouldn't recommend improving the magical portion at all unless, of course, it's a kid's book or a sort of story that is expected to have these people somehow be completely recharged just because they thought about their friends. Though, if you do to have it match, do choose to have it be magic related, then I'd recommend having them find just enough fuel left in their tanks to do one last little move that ends up just buying them some time for their comrades to show up to take the enemy down. But remember, don't overdo it. You can't have your character be an inch from death with a beast claws around their throat as they are stuck in a cage, entire body paralyzed with no room to escape. And then all of a sudden, they manage to send out an entire fireball, and or they manage to teleport safely a few feet away. No, it has to be weak and pretty much be as seen as a dud or a, or a waste of time to the reader, only for it to slowly work out. For instance, if you had a fire user in the situation previously described, then they and then have their little fuel left be them forming a spark or, for, or warming up their skin to the point where the beast drops them and is stunned for a moment. Or if they can teleport, then have them teleport just outside of the beast's grip, maximum one inch away from their claw. If you have someone that can fly, then have them have just enough strength to lift up and knock the beast partially off balance. Basically do little moves that confuse the enemy for just a few seconds till backup arrives. But you must also make sure that the that afterwards the character is practically drained and is unable to do much for for a little while since they have to recover. But all in all, the power left should basically be at a level that would be a baby's first moves. Next up, let's do physical. Picture this. You're on a rocking boat of sorts, and all of a sudden these giant human-like animals come onto the ship and attempt to slaughter you and all of your friends. You've been kicking ass and managed to knock a cheetah person overboard as well as a wolf person. But by then you've sustained multiple injuries and find yourself struggling to even hold yourself up. That's when a giant bear chucks a crate that weighs several hundred pounds straight for you and it manages to crush the lower half of your body. You attempt to break free or call for help, but your friends are all busy fighting on in the top all busy fighting, and the top half of your body is impossible to control due to the swishing of the boat and your zagged energy, and your zapped energy. Then you see one of your friends get taken down by an eagle person, just managing to move their head out of the way from being pecked, and another is being held back by a gorilla human, attempting to face off in hand-to-hand -hand combat while also con contemplating how to help out the eagle-downed friend, and failing horribly. So, with that bit of motivation from seeing your friends struggle, and your love for them, and the pain you feel by imagining them gone, you get an added boost of adrenaline of sorts. You manage to use your arms to pull yourself slightly forward slightly, then you flip your body over and wiggle your legs till the crate is just crushing your ankles and feet. So, you decide to sit up, use your arms like a lever, stabilizing them on the ground, and manage to hold the crate up for a split second. 
just enough time to free out your legs completely. But then here's where you, you'd be at a crossroads. You could go the more accurate route, the more accurate route and have the character's fingers completely squished, which would leave them having to continue to fight without fingers. Or you can have the less accurate route and have them manage to be faster than a several hundred pound giant crate and manage to get both their legs and arms out of the way safely. But for the sake of storytelling, I'm going to have them keep their fingers. So you're free now, but you're heavily injured. You limp a bit and manage to spot a gun a few feet away. But at the same time, your friend being pecked is just five seconds away from having their skull completely shattered by a huge beak. And it'll take you about six seconds to limp your way over to the weapon and shoot it. Well, obviously you have to go straight to help the friend since there may not since there may be other options, but you're just focused on the clock ticking and your friend crying, screaming out for help as they continue to be choked by the giant bird. You manage to get over in time and push all your body weight into the animal, knocking it to the ground and breaking your friend free. You gesture to the weapon, they nod, with their paint-soaked face and rush over, grabbing the weapon and shooting the bird. Next, the gorilla, that was another second away from biting your buddy's head off. Then, the bear, that now had two of your friends, other friends cornered that were busy fighting a Canadian goose previously. You hear one shot go off, hitting the bear straight in the spine, then, but then drop to the ground as the second one rings out. Finally, too exhausted to hold yourself up, you saved your friends, thanks to the power of friendship. And now, you must rest as they finish everything else off. Then finally, the mental abilities that can be approved thanks to the power of friendship. Picture this. You've been depressed, stressed, and stressed out for a few months now due to a physical exam coming up at your magical high school. Then, the day finally comes. You contemplate skipping school and just staying in bed, but knew it would be worse if you don't show up due to not only the possibility of being expelled, but also having to pay a massive fine. So you pull yourself out of bed and manage to get to school a few minutes before the exam starts. However, due to how serious the exam is, none of your friends are able to meet you beforehand to wish you luck. So you go in feeling alone and scared. The room starts off pitch black, with the voice of your principal coming through the darkness from some sort of intercom. The first portion of the test begins and you start to raise up from the ground, choosing to bend down and to avoid falling over. Then the lights come on and you realize you're on a tall stone platform with several more around you, getting higher and higher. Below you is rolling, bubbling lava. You search up to the highest point and find a balcony. That must be the checkpoint. Easy. It's just some parkour. Except the problem is that each platform is several feet apart and you've only made jumps at this distance a few times. Plus, you've always had a mild feel of heights that was always easy to ignore up to now. Being this high up, utter doom below you, the impossible action of jumping several feet for 20 plus platforms, your vision gets blurry and you claw yourself onto the platform, refusing to look down or even open your eyes. Till you hear a voice play out on the intercom, it's your best friend, cheering you on and telling you to look behind you. Slowly, carefully, you open your eyes and maneuver yourself to look at the wall behind you. It's extremely tinted, but you can still see them. All your friends are there, choosing to pause practice for a moment to come and see you, to cheer you on. They all share a few words of motivation. Then, with tears in your eyes, you wipe them up and begin to stand. The ground below you is definitely just a simulation. If anything, it's just a pool. You'll land safely if you were to drop, and no worries, you can always retry this level. Then the platform ahead of you, one foot higher, ten feet away. Your best friend taught you how to make this jump, and even s said themselves that if you just examined your surroundings, then you'll be able to e make each jump easily. The stone isn't perfect smooth, perfectly smooth, they have little cracks, bumps, and crevices that can be gripped onto. Each platform is about 1.5 feet wide in diameter. A little smaller than what you've been training on, but you just need to leap off. Just need to be able to leap off. Edging yourself on the back of the platform, you do a quick sprint forward, then leap off of the front. 
allowing your shirt to spread out like a flying squirrel's wings, with your arms completely straight. You, you don't land it perfectly, but you still manage to grip on, mustering enough strength to pull yourself up. Glancing backwards, your friends are all cheering, giving each other high fives, and battling for the microphone. They congratulate you, you smile, and continue to make your way through the course. The first round was far from a perfect score, but still above passing nonetheless. Now, to cheer on your friends. Which one of the three stories was your favorite? I'll be leaving the question as a Q&A on this episode on Spotify. If you're And if you're listening on a site that allows commenting, then feel free to comment which was your favorite and what you thought of it. And just like that, you managed to use the power of friendship to give your characters a little bit of strength without it being corny or cringy. But just keep this in mind. Don't overdo it. Especially if the story isn't marketed directly to kids. Instead, just have the power of friendship be a little boost, just like how I've been saying this for s- been saying for this entire episode. If you have any questions on writing power of friendship or liked suggestions, then don't hesitate to comment or contact me. Check out my novels Death Chill Flame Rip and Arctic Blaze on Amazon Kobo, link in description. Check out Crave Ryan Club Premium on Patreon, Spotify, link in description. Check out the Crave Ryan Club Discord server in the description. Check out my personal Instagram at dark underscore night underscore wolves. And this friendly, friendiest friendship of a powerful meeting has now come to an end. <laughs>